Hello Vital Sign. Today we're going to talk about Eulerian trails and circuits. An Eulerian trail is a walk through a graph that does not repeat edges and that passes through every edge in the graph exactly once. It is generally taken to mean an open walk, that is one that starts and ends on different vertices. If we're being strict with the definition of trail, it could refer to both a closed and open walk that passes through every edge exactly once. If a graph has an Eulerian trail, we say it is semi-Eulerian. An Eulerian circuit is a closed walk, that is, it is a walk that starts and ends on the same vertex and passes through every edge in the graph exactly once. If a graph has an Eulerian circuit, we say it's an Eulerian graph. For the purposes of this video, we'll use the term Eulerian trail to refer to open Eulerian trails, and the term Eulerian circuit to refer to closed Eulerian trails. That way we don't have to keep clarifying whether a given trail is open or closed. Let's see some more examples now. This was an Eulerian trail, but not a circuit, because it ended on a different vertex than it started from. This is a circuit, but it is not an Eulerian circuit, because it doesn't visit every edge in the graph. Finally, here you'll see an example of an Eulerian circuit in a graph, visiting every edge exactly once. The main thing to grasp here is that Eulerian trails and circuits visit every edge in the graph with no repeated edges allowed, and that an Eulerian circuit starts and ends on the same vertex, while an Eulerian trail starts and ends on different vertices, at least for the purposes of this video. Also, I'd like to clarify that the graphs we're talking about do not have to be simple graphs. Multigraphs, that is, graphs with multiple edges between a single pair of vertices, can also have Eulerian trails and circuits. Here you can see an example of a multigraph with an Eulerian trail. Directed graphs, whose edges are represented by arrows and can only be traversed in one direction, can also have Eulerian circuits and trails, such as the directed graph shown here. All that matters is that there is a walk through the graph that uses every edge exactly once. Let's move on to analyzing two major properties of Eulerian circuits and trails. It has been proven that a connected graph has an Eulerian circuit if and only if all of its vertices have even degree. That means that if a graph's vertices are all of even degree, it's guaranteed to have an Eulerian circuit. And if a graph has an Eulerian circuit, then it's guaranteed that all of its vertices have even degree. The second property is, a graph has an Eulerian trail if and only if it has two odd degree vertices. Remember that we're referring to Eulerian open trails as Eulerian trails in this video. As we said earlier, such graphs are known as semi-Eulerian graphs. Let's examine these properties in greater detail now, starting with the first one. Suppose we have an Eulerian graph G. Then we can write out an Eulerian circuit in this graph as some ordered list of vertices alternated by edges, such that all edges in the graph are listed exactly once, and the first and final vertices are the same vertex, with the possibility of repeating vertices in the list. Notice that whenever a vertex that is not our initial or terminal vertex appears in the list, it is preceded and succeeded by an edge incident to it. Also notice that whenever an edge appears in the list, it is preceded and succeeded by the vertices it connects. If we want to find the degree of any non-initial vertex in this Eulerian circuit, we could simply double the number of times it appears in the list, as each occurrence would correspond to two incident edges. This procedure must exhaust every edge incident to that vertex, or else it would imply the existence of an edge not in the Eulerian circuit, which is not possible by the definition of an Eulerian circuit. Since we doubled the number of occurrences of this vertex in the list to find its degree, it must have even degree. All that's left now is to show that the initial vertex has even degree. 
One way to see this is true is to start the list at a different vertex, as it is a circuit after all, and shifting everything one step preserves the circuit. Once we do this, we can treat our formerly initial vertex as just another intermediate vertex in the list, meaning it must have even degree 2. So, all vertices in an Eulerian graph must have even degree. Now what about the other direction? Why is it that if a connected graph has all vertices of even degree, then it contains an Eulerian circuit? Here's why this is true. Suppose we've proven this statement for a few cases, perhaps up to some number k of vertices, which wouldn't be too hard to do. Then suppose that we have a graph on k plus 1 vertices, with all vertices having even degree. Now, we could start from any arbitrary vertex v, and there would have to be a way to return to this vertex. That is, there is a circuit in the graph that includes vertex v. If there were no circuit including v, that would imply that we would get stuck somewhere in the graph. But it's impossible to get stuck at a vertex because all vertices have even degree. Whenever you enter a vertex, there's always a way out. So, once we are finished with our circuit from arbitrary vertex v, let's remove all of the edges we used in the circuit and examine the resulting graph. What we get is some number of connected components, in this case 4, each satisfying the condition that all of their degrees are even. This is due to the fact that all vertices in the graph started with even degree, and our circuit only removed exactly 2 from the degrees of all the vertices it passed through. Moving on, we assume that every connected graph with less than k plus 1 vertices, and all degrees even, has an Eulerian circuit. Therefore, each remaining connected component must have an Eulerian circuit. While revisiting our original circuit, what if we started at that same vertex v, and then when we hit a vertex that was in one of those connected components, we take a detour, completing an Eulerian circuit through that connected component and returning back to that vertex. Then we continue along our original circuit until we get to another vertex that was in one of those connected components. Then we'll take another detour, and we'll continue in this way until we've exhausted all the connected components from before. Finally, we return to our initial vertex. What we just did was an Eulerian circuit around the entire graph of k plus 1 vertices. By the principle of strong induction, then, all connected, undirected graphs with all vertices of even degree contain an Eulerian circuit. Now let's take a closer look at the second property, that, that a connected, undirected graph has an Eulerian trail if and only if it has two vertices of odd degree. It should be clear from before that since a graph with an Eulerian circuit must have all vertices of even degree, then any graph with an odd degree vertex cannot have an Eulerian circuit. Now suppose we have some graph with just two vertices of odd degree, A and B. Add an edge between A and B. Our resulting graph contains an Eulerian circuit, because now all of its vertices have even degree. Next. Suppose we represent an Eulerian circuit in this graph as a list. At some point in that list, we'll see the extra edge, E, preceded and succeeded by one of the formerly odd degree vertices. That is, we travel from one of the formerly odd degree vertices to the other over the extra edge, E. Let's shift our list now so that it starts with this step. And then let's reverse our list so that it ends with that step. Remember that we can do this because reversing or shifting a list representing a circuit in a graph just gives us a new list representation of that same circuit. Now simply remove the extra edge from this circuit. While we can no longer have an Eulerian circuit, what we do have is an Eulerian trail. This follows from the assumption that we had an Eulerian circuit before we removed that final edge. So by removing the final edge, what we get is just an Eulerian trail. Every edge must still be visited exactly once, and we ended and started on different vertices. Moving on, why is it that if a graph has an Eulerian trail, then it has two odd degree vertices? Well, by a similar argument to how we proved that if a graph has an Eulerian circuit, 
then all of its vertices have even degree, we could prove that every vertex except for the initial and terminal vertices of an Eulerian trail have even degree. Wherever the intermediate vertices occur in the list representation of our trail, they are preceded and succeeded by edges incident to them. And counting up these edges by doubling the number of occurrences of intermediate vertices in the list must exhaust all the edges incident to an intermediate vertex, meaning that all intermediate vertices have even degree. Then, suppose that an initial vertex occurs k times in the trail, besides its initial occurrence. By doubling the number of non-initial occurrences, we find that our initial vertex is incident to at least 2k edges. Notice that we've missed exactly one edge for our initial vertex, namely the one that leads from its initial occurrence. That means the degree of the initial vertex is 2k plus 1, which will always be an odd number. By a similar method, we could prove the same thing for the terminal vertex. This proves our theorem that if a graph has an Eulerian trail, it has exactly two odd degree vertices. Not only that, but the initial and terminal vertices of the trail are the ones with the odd degree. To summarize, Eulerian circuits visit every edge in the graph exactly once and start and end on the same vertex. Eulerian trails visit every edge in the graph exactly once and start and end on different vertices. Connected, undirected graphs are Eulerian if and only if all of their vertices have even degree. And connected, undirected graphs are semi-Eulerian if and only if exactly two of their vertices have odd degree. Note that this implies that any graph with one or more than two odd degree vertices is not Eulerian nor semi-Eulerian. That's it for this video. In my next video, we'll take a look at the lexicographic product of graphs, one of the big four graph products, so stay tuned. I've left some links in the comments for more information on Eulerian circuits and trails, including a very nice interactive exploration. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment if you liked the video. Have a great day.